mm-hmm. in my own my my natural you element know, element. Mm-hmm. So I tend to, and that was another thing with it. I was holding on to it because I as I went I was putting it back into the canal to get it out. I'm going. I can't believe I spoke this way. <laughs> <laughs> right? Why would I spell that? That you know, it was like that. That plays uh-huh. a major part. So, because I have to go back and and am selfish even now, still with it out. I'm still edits and publishing uh-huh. edits on as it you go. as I uh-huh. go because you know we say what you call it, right? Or where they at? Okay. Right. Or come, come here. Right. Right. <laughs> come here. Right. You know, we're leaving out a lot of words and to have more people able to relate to what I'm saying Uh um, is, you know, I have to balance that out because my daughter looked at the good book and go, oh, this is the ghetto. (laughs) (laughs) And it's crazy because Lele told me that her daughter did the same (laughs) thing. (laughs) But I I really think that it's good that you be as authentic as possible because when it comes to reading, You want to reach as many audiences that are available. Right. And a lot of times we may speak one way. I think all cultures have some form of broken language as opposed to speaking properly on a regular basis. Right. Right. So I think that I applaud you using, you know, vernacular that we normally use in our everyday communication with each other. Okay. (laughs) I think that's one way. To reach not only people that, you know, are more mature, but also to reach the youth, okay, the younger audiences. I think that's one way that you can reach them also. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that I feel like I struggle, but I struggle a lot with that, that mm-hmm. because of that, because I want this person to be able to read it as well, right. you know, and this person to read it as well and understand, you know, what I'm saying and what I'm writing right. and try to reach a broader, right, a broader yeah. audience. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. I yeah. think that's wonderful. So, um, what else was, did I want to know about the book? Let me see. You used your real name. I thought that was interesting. I love the picture on the back. And my husband know, picked it. Your husband picked the picture. <laughs> he picked the picture on the back. I love the picture on the back. And I'm really looking forward to um, reading the next book. I'm trying. I started reading the book, but you know I do a lot of things too. So I'm reading it slowly. <laughs> but I could tell you all for those that have not got your book yet, this is Dangerously in Love by Zakia Smalls. It's selling very well right now on Amazon. It's also on Goodreads. And for those of you who like a good love story with a little, a lot of drama in it, okay, <laughs> right. yeah, this is you should read. So I want to ask you, though, did growing up in the city of Newark, especially in the you grew up in new community, did that help or add to what you were able to draw from yourself in order to create the book? Well, as my mother, you know that we grew up there, but I never, especially me, have I've never been a part of that element. You know, I never really was around those things. Of course, in growing up, it played a major role because... I've he- I heard these things. Right. So to experience for my own experiences, I don't have, you know, those experiences. experiences. Mm-hmm. But I know of mm-hmm. people and mm-hmm. I know of things, um, those experiences, which was so crazy in me writing it because I feel like me and somebody may say, like, you know, I'm crazy. I tend to prophesy things. Mm-hmm. And I that go back to me saying the way she met him in the book, mm-hmm. the way I met my husband in the book, mm-hmm. and how we immediately clicked. clicked. And you know, mm-hmm. I feel I kind of prophesied things. So in writing uh, some of the things that I wrote 18 years ago, mm-hmm. seeing back later, these things are things that happened. Oh, it actually you know, came that, to be. That came to be. Oh. So it was like, you know, I feel I'm not sure if the, because the and I say it all the time. I've read my book um, at least ten to fifteen times, mm-hmm. and 
not trying to correct it. This was years before publishing yeah. because it's such a good story. And I'll go back and I say, wow, mm-hmm. you know, wow, that, mm-hmm. where did I get that mm-hmm. from? You know, how did I, how did that come in my head? Wow. You know, like that. So I even shocked myself mm-hmm. in, you know, telling that story mm-hmm. and telling the story. But I feel like in that story, some of the things I tell, I speak for those people, people. that I did mm-hmm. grow up with and those people who did experience and have those experiences themselves. Mm-hmm. So I feel like in growing up in North and being from North, like everybody who knows me knows I don't really know street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can get you there, but right. you can't tell me a street you live on know right. where we're going, you know. But being able to put like certain streets mm-hmm. and certain neighborhoods mm-hmm. and things like that, and it's something that I've never even been in, right? You know, into the book was just like so. The book is based in North New Jersey, Central North New Jersey, and I hear you saying that you're a visionary. You know, you have things in this book that did not come to pass at the time you wrote it. You couldn't even know that right. they would come to right. pass. But being that you do have uh, are a visionary, some of the things you are able to look at years later now and go. Wow, they actually yeah. happened. That's the thing. It's yeah. like, wow, they actually happened. They actually came true. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. throws me because right. I'm just writing this. And, it's, and like I said, when I had that flow, when it would just flow, mm-hmm. I don't want to stop. And mm-hmm. I don't even know. And I wrote, when I wrote this book, I was writing it. You remember mm-hmm. in notebooks. So I'm just writing and going through notebook after notebook. And then I have to go back and go, Wow, so I this this is what not even <laughs> knowing, you know, it was just coming out. Right, it just flowing it's out. Just flowing so out. do you think growing up in North New Jersey, I know that experience in itself in your time was very different than it was in my time. Do you think that the current situation eighteen years ago as it was is definitely a influence for the characters, even though you took it from people you know? Because of their, their life things that they went through at that time, their personality, do you think some of that is the basis of the character, who they were, and what they were doing possibly at the time? Um, at the time when I wrote it, my brother was, what, 16, 17? Like, so, who excuse me, wasn't... That the IE he is today, right? And um, Nana wasn't the Nana, the truth that he is today, uh-huh. you know, then. But I did take from um, character uh-huh. like that, the personality uh-huh. and things uh-huh. like that. Uh-huh. I did take a lot of that into their character, into uh-huh. their personality, and uh-huh. um, knowing what their response to certain things would be, uh-huh. knowing what they would say uh-huh. in the situation, just. From knowing them and mm-hmm. feeling them. So I did, and it was crazy because I just had this conversation with Ibn and Nana, and they was like, you know, how did you, you, you knew us. You wasn't around us all the time like that at that time, especially not outside, but how did you characterize us, our personalities, so well? But it was, I grew up with y'all. Right. You know, I know y'all. Right. So I was able to draw from, even though the situation wasn't, the situation, I knew your response and your words and the things you would say Mm -hmm. in those situations. So let me ask you um, just uh, one more question. In reference to the women or woman in this book, Tina especially, do you see that woman or did you pattern her after any woman that you may have seen at that time or a characterization of a bunch of women and their characteristics. It's think? so crazy because at the time that I wrote the book, you know, mm-hmm. for me, I always say I never been in love before my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, when I wrote the book, again at that time, I had never been in love. So with Tina, because there's two females, it's Tina and then it's mm-hmm. Camira, but you have to get into the book. Mm-hmm. Um, the way she she was just, it wasn't after anybody specifically, but in that I get from my parents in knowing what that true love mm-hmm. feeling is. And I based her character, I just built her character 
off of, of feeling itself. So she was beautiful on the outside, but she was her inside beauty made her even more, more beautiful, beautiful, you know. Oh, yes. So it kind of overshadowed even the outside okay. beauty. Mm-hmm. And I just built that, like I said, off of what I felt like love, love is. So mm-hmm. I just made her the focus of the love, love. Okay. so she was just what she was basically love, love. okay yeah. so she is love she hey, is Vina love. is she love. is love okay yeah. so let me ask you um in closing uh what would like to tell is there anything you would like the audience to know uh, in regard to this book dangerously in love um i mean it take i'm a storyteller so what I will say, you know, in the beginning, it takes a little while to get it going mm-hmm. into like that action and everything else. Um, it takes that was another reason why it was kind of hard for me to break it up because mm-hmm. by the time I was to like a hundred and seventy something pages, mm-hmm. I was really just starting to get going, and I didn't feel like I should give readers cut it off right then and there without mm-hmm. really getting the getting into to it, it to make them want more. So um, I just wanted to you know give it the shot, mm-hmm. get past that, you know get past the beginning and it kind of just keeps roping you in roping mm-hmm. you in you you want to know what's going to happen next, next what's going to happen next okay. so you get to the end to find out what happened with each, each person other. right okay so there you have it people this is our interview today with Zakia Smalls author of Dangerously in Love the book is 37 chapters it's one of the best reads you're going to read in 2020 y'all sitting in the house doing nothing on COVID read the book okay you can get the book <laughs> on Amazon and you also can get the book on Goodreads. It's called, once again, Dangerously in Love, Zakia Smalls. Welcome and thank you for listening on Relationship Cake and Ice Cream. You can look at this interview again on Spreaker Podcast, coming live. All right. Now what you need?